just that negative five. There's the wind chill too, making it so brutal outside, and it's so cold. Homeowners are urged to take precaution to avoid frozen pipes, and it's not just in homes. Sadly, a frozen pipe broke late last night at the Beaver County Humane Society. The sprinkler system burst, causing extensive water damage through the shelter. Fortunately, no animals were affected, but there's a big mess to clean up there today in Aliquippa. We have featured the shelter on our Pet of the Week segments many times before, and we are so sorry that they're going through this right now. So we want to make sure that we're minimizing the risk of frozen pipes in our own homes. And Andy Amrine of EV True Value Hardware is here with some timely advice. This is nothing anybody wants to be going through. No, no, but uh, you know my morning starts early, like yours does. Right. And the phone started ringing about four o'clock this morning. A lot of with people dealing frozen with frozen pipes. Yeah. So it, it is a common, and we were anticipating. I was anticipating it after having a good 24-hour cycle of that extreme cold, mm -hmm. and I think it's only going to get worse today. As as it stays cold, there's going to be a lot more frozen pipes. We we're talking about like the, some of the things that you can yeah. do, like keeping your cabinet, cabinet doors door open, open, underneath your water sink, dripping. And the kitchen. Yeah. You know, but you know, and those are all real good things. Uh, the one thing with the cabinet doors that I like to tell people though is remove the clutter too. Because the mean, heat can't get in it if it's blocked. Heat can't get to right. the pipe if all that stuff is in there, blocking it and preventing the heat from getting in there. So. Well, get rid of the clutter. And other than turning on the faucet just a little mm -hmm. bit to the drip and opening the doors, there are plenty of gadgets and things. It, there we can, is. So there, we there, can add there to really this. is. And something as simple as pipe insulation. I mean, okay. we laugh. It looks like a noodle that you right, have that in you your swimming with. pool. <laughs> yeah. uh, but it, it's split, it's open. And, and with that itself, it just wraps directly around the pipe itself. So, and it's very, very simple. So, and these are whopping. Two, three dollars yes, for a piece much. of it. So it's just a matter of making sure you're wrapping it totally around the pipe. And if okay. you don't want to go out and buy something like this, and even choose towels, uh, rags, something. And and the the dilemma with frozen pipes is you may just have in your garage a little pinhole in the in the block in the side of the house, and it's like a little laser beam blowing a stream of air right into this one so spot on the. And it just takes one and spot. And it just does. takes one little yeah. teeny tiny spot for doing it, whether it's a, a valve or an elbow or even just somewhere on that piece of pipe itself. And once you get that frozen spot, it's just going to grow and grow and grow. Mm -hmm. And as it grows, what happens is it expands the pipe, and especially if it's near an elbow or a fitting, that's where the, the fitting will be pushed off. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. And right. it'll cause the leak itself. And, and other things, they make electrical heat cables and this is a short one it just plugs right in mm -hmm. and on the bottom of this brand there's a little thermostat and it's just a matter of taping it uh, onto the pipe itself so you just run it the length of the pipe and generally you're putting it on the bottom side and just using a good grade not your cheap 99 cent roll but a good grade of electrical tape and it'll hold that on there and it's plugged in and It'll keep that pipe warm. Andy, heat sources always worry me. I'm married to a firefighter, so mm -hmm. things Understood. like that are always in my mind. Sure. And I know that you've talked about this too. If we're using something like this, is it similar to a space heater where we don't want to plug this into an extension cord? No. Okay. This you can use an extension cord. Space heaters, never, right. ever, 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 can ever. You plug into ever. A, ever. Uh, space heater just can't be plugged into an extension cord. But these, yes, because of how low draw electricity they are, these could be plugged into okay. an extension cord where a space heater you Cannot. know, can't be plugged okay. into it. And there's other styles, other brands of heat cables. This is a brand that you actually can take and you can wrap it around uh, the, the pipe, pipe with it. So, you know, depending on the brand, the style and so forth. There's a, And heat cables work very, very well with it. Okay, good to um, know. You know. If you do get a frozen pipe uh, and hair dryer, putting a space heater underneath that cabinet or something to create additional heat, I like to use heat guns. A heat gun itself, this is going to produce you know, almost three to four times what a hair dryer will. And with a hair dryer or a heat gun, it's just a matter of slowly waving it over top of the pipe to thaw it out. You really don't want to take it and put it into one spot itself. That would be bad also. I have a question for sure. you. Sure. So how do you know that your pipe is frozen? Is there going to be any external sign or is it just going to be cold to the touch? It's going to be very cold to the okay. touch in that spot. Um, so you can generally find an area, but that's one of the reasons I tell people to wave it over top because if it's quickly that you found that the kitchen sink isn't doing it, you know it's somewhere under it and you don't have a space heater and you want to just 
uh, take a hair dryer and you can move it over and just wave it back and forth okay. over the length of that pipe and it's going to thaw it out. Okay, good. Okay, and uh, you know, if you do get it and you do get a burst and you're cutting the pipe, there's simple ways of fixing without soldering anymore. I'm okay. not a fan of the big open flames and the torches, and if you are, are a plumber and you're using it, great. But the homeowner, they make snap fittings now. This is called a John Guest fitting, and on a John Guest fitting, it's just a matter of putting it on, twist lock, and I'm all done. Uh, Stop. No. That, <laughs> that makes things a lot easier for people. Absolutely. Here. Okay. Good. I can even do this. Push it on. Okay. I'm a handy man You're, now. You, you just, Call me Handy you Heather. Just, you just handy fixed Andy. the spot that was broken. You'd have to cut the pipe, clean the ends, but with these kind of fittings, and these are good for all pressure right. and everything like that. You can use them on copper. You can use them on plastic. They're amazing fittings with it. Um, but then, you know, we did, we're talking briefly about heaters and so forth, and there's a lot of different heaters out there, from the ceramic to the radiant to the oil filled and so forth, and they're great for supplemental heat. Mm -hmm. they, they really are, but as we said in the beginning of the segment, you know, that's my biggest fear. People using all these supplementals heat are using extension cords with it, and that's where you do get the fires. We, we had a question from somebody uh, the other day about sure. kerosene and space, the difference between mm -hmm. the sources. Do you sure. recommend one over the other? Well, you know, kerosene itself, it's a flammable liquid. Yeah. So properly used uh, in today's standards of how they are made, they're a lot better than they were 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, I would never even consider a kerosene, a kerosene heater, heater with it. Uh, now with the better fuel, the better heaters, uh, oxygen sensors, tip over safety on them, they're a lot better than they were. Would I use one in my house? No, I, st I still wouldn't. Um, you would still need some airflow and that through it. So on an outside patio, garage, where there's no open flame, something like that, fine. They're Great. good, but in a house. All right. Well, thanks. I wouldn't use it. Thank you, you can. so much, Andy. <laughs> I'll pass if you're saying no. Okay. Andy Amrine of EB True Value Hardware in Bethel Park and regular PTL contributor. Thank you so much as yep. always. Thank you.